All right, everybody, we have a really special episode for you this month as we head into our big event of the year, all about the girls, the event, June 9th, get your tickets. Um, we have one of the women that have been around for all of those all about the girls events. Um, she is administrative assistant here at the Valparaiso police department. She's also great news life's financial director and has been since day negative three. Uh, Natalie Malman is the lifer for life has been here since the beginning, obviously is married to our founder, Chris and has been an integral part of not only our company, uh, but also all about the girls, the event, and is a woman that I personally look up to greatly, and I'm so excited to have her on. Everybody, please welcome Natalie Malman. Well, welcome, Natalie. Thanks so much for being here, Thank all about you. the girls. Thank you for having me. So, of course, I know you so very well, but most people probably don't because you don't have a Facebook. Nope. I know gas school. This is true. So for people that don't know you, just tell us who you are, where you work, kind of a little bit about yourself, your your elevator pitch for Natalie Malman. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Natalie Malman. Do I, just, I feel like I should say my age, my kids. Uh, <laughs> Happily no, married. This I is not have, of course, married to Chris <laughs> Malman and um, for 29 happy years this year. And I am the administrative assistant at Valpo Police. And also our financial director. And also our financial life. director. Thank you for all you do. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for putting up with our founder for so many years. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you for that because without you, we would not be here. You're welcome. And he probably wouldn't be either. Well, yeah, you've saved him Depends from on the day. murder, I'm sure, a couple mm -hmm. times. <laughs> or murdered him myself. Mm. So you're married to the founder of Great News Life. You're financial director here. Um, I know this story, but I'd love for you to touch on it. You can tell the shortened version if you want. Way back in 2009 when we started, I believe Chris said you would not have to help with the company. Is that, tell us that little yes, bit Yes, he there. called me, he had just left a mess, um, message. Hello, I'm leaving a message. <laughs> uh, he had just left a meeting with um, a local media company and uh, they basically told him they didn't think his idea would work. He called me on his way home and he said we're gonna start a good news company and i and i said how can i help and he said i'm not sure you're gonna have to but we'll see we'll see and what is it 13 years 13 later 13 years later you're i'm still, still helping our financial <laughs> director yeah i'm done yeah thank you for that i appreciate it a ton. um and then you are also of course part of the valparaiso police department as you mentioned their administrative assistant um tell me a little bit about that life i mean it's very kind of separate from here so i would love to know what does that look like an average day um uh, so i just celebrated eight years there wow can't believe really? it already yep Goodness in goodness. may this is may mm. And yes. um, to, you know, typical day is I, I deal with a five point seven million dollar budget. Oh my goodness! H help the administration track that. I do all of the overtime, any bills that need to be paid and submitted to city hall, mm. um, and just cool. kind of help the administration with whatever they need. That's fantastic. Yeah. How do you like it? I love it. You seem to. I do. The team there is awesome. Yeah. It's good. All the all the officers are amazing. The administration's amazing to work for and with and um, even the civilians we've had a really good connection so yeah. it's been good good and how do you like it here you like it right I love it <laughs> you like it better here right I'm not gonna say uh, that <laughs> it's just a different kind of love I know <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you tell your sister that you don't like very much? No, I do. Oh, okay. I like not, it. not that you don't like your sister. You know, it's my mm. first love for mm. sure. But when I um, not the only. heard about the job at the police department, it was a good time for me. I felt like we had gotten great news to where it needed to be. Mm. Um, and I was ready for something for myself. I and love it. so I still really enjoy what I do here. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to help Chris where he needs it, but it's it's... And how it's in how, a good place. Yeah. Um, percentage of women within the police department. Do you know? Is there a lot of women in there? Uh, the records department is all women. Fantastic. We're, they're all civilians. Um, let's see. There are about five female officers. 
That's fantastic. Yeah. We should get some of them on. We should. We should have them on the podcast. Yeah, we should. We've only had one female officer so far. She was from Hammond, so we'll bring some in from Valpo. Yeah. We'll make a thing. Yeah, that would be, be good. Cool. Yeah. But we should have several. I don't know how many podcasts, you know. I don't know how many people you want in one singular podcast. Yeah. Three. It would be good. Do it. Have, That'd just be super fun. Have, have a group of them. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you've helped us for years. You work at the police department. Um, tell me more about your history. So um, just your, bring, your upbringing and your family and how you got to where you are today. Grew up in Valparaiso. Was adopted as a very young baby, um, but grew up here with my wonderful parents. I'm the oldest of five. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, three of the five of us are in town here in Valpo, so Still that's town. really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, one brother has five kids, the other one has three, oh. and so there's a lot of a lot of grandkids in town. My parents are in town still, yeah. Um, but grew up here, went to St. Paul Catholic School, um, went to Val- really ingrained in the Valpo community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went to Valpo High School and then went on to IU. And then IU. Uh, yep. I then, know there's uh, some competition in this company, IU Purdue, but I think yeah. as well as, you know, at the, the police station at large. too, for yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, definitely. Um, House divided. Yeah. But after IU, moved to Chicago with my grandparents, lived with them for a little bit while I started working, and then met Chris at the Chicago Board of Trade. Um, we yeah. lived in Naperville for 15 years, Naperville, Illinois. And then we moved back here. It's been 15 years already. Wow. Yeah. So that's good. And then moved back here. It's a great here. town. Yep. Moved back here. Then sent our two kids to St. Paul School, which was really cool for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Full circle. Full circle. Went to, then they went to Valpo High School. Wow. Um, Peyton went on to go to IU, and Trevor went to Purdue. Nice. <laughs> just, just kidding. <laughs> sure you were. Sort of. But, uh, but yeah, that's good. It's been great. School, it's been great. I love it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and you guys combined have four kids. Correct. And they are Christopher are uh, is thirty eight. Mm-hmm. Nikki is thirty four. Um, we have two granddaughters through oh her gosh. that are three and that are the most four and now little. they're four and two. The one the younger one's about to be three. And uh, then Trevor and Peyton. Trevor oh. is twenty six and Peyton's twenty three. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. It's good. So tell me a little bit about something in your life. You know, I always talk with our guests about what has impacted you greatly. So um, mm. what have you ever had? And maybe it's that adoption piece, but t- talk about some sort of tough times in your life, some adversity you had to go through. What are some things that brought you here that made you who you are today? Mm. Anything that comes to mind? Not necessarily. I've pretty had a pretty good life I feel like you know um when when bad things happen in the world you feel like okay I don't actually have it so bad yeah Um, but I just feel like I'm really lucky I don't feel like there's been anything that's really um tested me maybe if anything we did have a, a very big fire in our house in Naperville Illinois it was almost a total loss wow um so if anything challenged me that did for sure yeah that's hard yeah wow um I didn't know that. But I wouldn't say that it shaped me. It just more um, made me appreciate things. Yeah. And well, and that, as you say, talk about how you haven't had it that hard. And I think it takes a, you can decide that, right? You mm-hmm. can decide whether those things that you've True. had in your life are hard or not. And you've mm-hmm. obviously decided that they weren't. True. And that's great. And maybe they weren't. But I think there are people in the world that say, man, I've had it rough. This happened mm-hmm. to me. Yeah. And you guys could potentially be in the same shoes. True. Saying completely pol- that's polar true. opposite things. Right. I feel like the older I get, the more I try to definitely look at the glass half full Good. versus half empty. I think with age. Yes, it's an age I thing, appreciate, probably. Yeah, yeah, I've learned the same. Like, I have appreciate, I appreciate so much more now. Like, my life is way more chill now, mm-hmm. um, and I am much happier about it. I feel like in some ways, I'm, it's just starting to grow into the person that I'm supposed to be, and I'm, I'm 54. I think that's a consistently changing growing thing too though too. true like you that's true who you are as a human is evolves and changes change, always and changing that's true. you're always kind of coming into that next to you yeah and i do think generationally too or i guess like i, I think if you think about a 10-year period like your 40s or your 50s mm-hmm. or your whatever yeah, right 
I, milestones. You are almost a different person during each of those. And That's I even true. see now like where I started in my 30s as I end my 30s quietly. Um, <laughs> shh, shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> uh, I see similar where I really want to... I think who I was and who I am now is so different that I think my 40s will even be more different. That's true. And you're kind of coming in. I feel like I'm coming into that new person. So I think mm -hmm. similar for you is this is 50s, Natalie. <laughs> Please dress like a sock hop person. <laughs> yeah. Get her a poodle skirt. Just kidding. <laughs> um, women in your life. Tell me about women in your life that you really, that have truly impacted you, that are just like those staple people that made you who you are. Well, my mom, for for sure, as um, cliche as that is, she's just one of the sweetest, kindest people. Um, I feel like I'm thankful every day for having been adopted by them. Yeah, like I just and you're the only adopted yeah. one out of the family. Uh, Brad is as well. Okay, great. Yep. We are 20 months apart, and he was Aww. adopted from the same place in Canada. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So that is a really um, kind thing. It is. It is. Um, so her for sure. She's okay. just super kind. Um, I don't think I've ever heard her say a bad word about anyone. Aww. Which is, you know, again, it sounds a little cliche, but it's true. And it's hard to say. It's hard to be able to say that about a person. Yeah. Um, other than that, my sisters. Um, are you guys really close as a family? We're pretty close. Uh, my sisters are, uh, so like I said, I'm the oldest of five, then it's my two brothers, and then it's my two sisters. So um, growing up, not so much, but now that, we, that, that we're adults yeah. and we have kids, definitely, um, you know, you never talk as often as you wish you could. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, and my sister-in-laws, they're in town. Okay. So we've gotten so really close. So your brothers are here, your sisters right. are out right. of, of state, correct? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we get together pretty often so it's fun I see the pictures of course it, <laughs> and this is probably a funny yeah. kind of mention <clears throat> you your life is sort of lived on social media because you're married to great news life founder Chris yes so but you don't have social so how much of that do you so, even see uh, and, I know you know he'll share quite a bit with me which is great but it's also uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been out and they're like are you Chris Mullman's wife <laughs> or I saw you went on vacation at this place, and I'm like, I don't know who you are. It's interesting. Yeah, it's that, definitely like, I, out there. And, it really is. Yeah. yeah, and it's weird to be in a in a smaller town, but you know. Yeah. So it's interesting. And what do you, I don't feel like I need social media because I know I feel like he shares it all with me. Okay, so which you see is a great lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that we see you all. Most the time. of the time, I know what he has posted. There are times when people will come up and say, "Hi, hey, I saw this photo of blah blah blah," and I'm like, and like "Oh, what you did." did? That? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now you are a little on social, right? Like you've got. So I have Snapchat. I mostly snap Trendy. my kids. <laughs> And I follow my kids, Chris, you know, Great News Not Life, um, just other things that are super close to me. But I don't I almost don't think, ever. I don't think I'm on that list. I don't, you kidding. are. I just, I? Yeah, okay, good, I just started following good. you after, oh. what, nine years? <laughs> I'm so cool. I'm so cool. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, but... I almost never post anything. It's Although really I've stuff. started to do a little bit. Okay. I have nieces and nephews in um, Illinois and and my sister's kids in Illinois and in North Carolina. They're getting a little older now, so I've started to respond to some of their stuff. Okay, fun. But that's pretty much it. I never post anything. Really? Myself. Okay. I will respond like get, to their yeah. thing, but I don't ever know. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, Whatever. just it's not good, my thing. And it's probably a good balance in your household, yeah. too. Like, yeah. <laughs> Someone's all got a and all, not <laughs> and ze almost zero in, and now we average to fifty yes. percent, and we're good. Yeah, and it's a happy household. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Um, when you began your career, tell me a little bit about that, Natalie, to this Natalie, if you will. Oh, and gosh. You, what's the difference of at that age where you thought you'd be at fifty, and where you are? Fifty. Okay, so when I was young, I really wanted to be a stewardess on an airplane. Ooh. <laughs> I thought, like young, young, when you're a yeah. kid, like when little boys say, I want to be a fireman or a policeman. Yours was that my mind was I wanted to be a stewardess. I don't know why. I thought it was a cool job. You could yeah. travel around and yeah. 
Um, but you know, Lisa going. Lisa taught us it is a cool job. It is she a cool job. Like That's true. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but high school Natalie and college Natalie was, um, like I said, I was born in Canada, so I was kind of drawn to taking French in high school. Mm. Um, it helped me graduate college early, which nice. was cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I got my degree in French in the French language. Oh wow! Is what my degree I didn't know is that. in. Yeah. That's fantastic. So I always kind of wanted to work for the UN or um, like the French consulate in Chicago. Um, nice. It didn't pan out, but. Um, and do you still feel rather fluent today? Like, could you I speak? feel. S yeah, I could probably make my way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna take you on vacation with me. So okay. You can talk to everybody for me. It's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay your way. You make the um, way. I'm in. By communicating. <laughs> we will everyone. have French fries. <laughs> <laughs> we get to France. <laughs> Natalie starts asking for French fries with a and French wine. accent, <laughs> and we're all severely disappointed. <laughs> oh, God. Don't take oui, that. Oui, oui. We'll take some French fries, please. And, and I'm some, just like Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> Yes, please. Let's do that. Um, and so you were thinking that route, and then now you're here, which is pretty different. But it seems it like is really different. I went to so I like I said I moved in with my grandparents. Um, my mom. We went all around Chicago. We went to the French consulate and learned they mostly hire people from France. Um, tried to get other jobs. Well, there was this job fair at a hotel in Chicago. We went. And I interviewed. I got a job at the Chicago Board of Trade. Which is really cool. It was very cool. I mean, that's intense. Yeah. It was in their marketing department, and that's where I met Chris. And so you were not, like, on the floor? No. Okay. I was up in the, he was up in the marketing department. I was up in the marketing department. I love it. Um, so... That's where our paths cross. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard. I'm sure you've heard the other side of that story. Oh, yes. He tells them, I don't know how true it is. Yes, you he guys will have to ask everyone. That story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. For the team behind the cameras, ask Chris. But yeah. he tells everybody it's, it's, that it's, as soon as he saw you, he said, Who is that? I'm going to marry that girl. He did. I mean, that's pretty cool. It is. That's a pretty, like, that's a legit love story. Yeah. Tell me work life relationship. I'm getting away from balance because I think that word's annoying. Um, what does that look like? Are you always on? Are you more scheduled and sectored? How do you feel about your kind of balance or your work-life relationship? Like, how do you, what's your relationship with work? How do you bring it in? How do you not, not allow it in? Tell me I, that. you know what? It's like, what's the word? Uh, it's ebbed and flowed over time. Like, I feel like there was a time when I was, when the kids were littler and I didn't have to, I was fortunate enough to not have to work. I was, or, and then I worked from home. Mm -hmm. um, once the younger two were born, um, I would go in one day a week. My mom would drive from Valpo to Oakbrook every day and watch, uh, every day, once a week and okay. watch Trevor. Okay. And she would just walk around Oakbrook with him and Aww. while I worked. Um, but I feel like now, I feel like I'm on quite a bit. Okay. Um, which is fine because at this point in my life, I, other than Chris and I being at home, it's it's good. Now you're a bit of an empty nester. I'm an empty you've got nester. A more time. Right. It's not right. trying to handle four kids and right. sports and who forgot what, where, and right. all that and where, stuff. Mom, where's my socks? Oh my gosh. Tell me. I mean, so, but that, that my point was, I've gotten pretty good. I feel like on the weekends of putting my phone away. Okay. And at least on Sunday not looking at my phone. Oh, really? For the yeah. whole day, you don't mm -hmm. look at your phone? Pretty much. Nice. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. And of course, it's a choice, but you know. That's a hard choice. It is, it is, but it's worked. And how long have you been doing that? Um, probably just this calendar year. Yeah? Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Because otherwise, you can, you can be on as much as you want. Well, and that's, I mean, you've got to learn to turn it off. Yeah. And for me, it's, I am such an always on person mm -hmm. that I'll, you know, die trying to always be on. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm trying to get better is turn it off for just a little while. No, the world is not going to end if you do not nope. answer an email. No, we are not curing cancer here. We are, no one's going to die. It's going right. to be fine. Like, right. just don't, just breathe. Right. And I think it's just what you use it for. And, and even if the mindless scrolling, I think when you get into mm -hmm. those realms too, it's just mm -hmm. a time suck. At some point, oh, You're just completely. wasting time, um, and it's great to be aware, of it, but don't drown in it. I think it's just kind of that's what I always say about the negative news is like, you can be really aware of what's in your world, and that's good, 
but you'll drown yourself at some point and you've got to just be aware of what's happening in the world and not drown in all of the negativity that's oh. associated with that. And I think it's social, it's the same. You can scroll to your death. Right. Or you can kind of sector it and second yes, time. Yes, even for you. if I'm getting ready in the morning, I've noticed sometimes I'll scroll, scroll and then 20 minutes will go by, and I'm like, oh, I've just mm -hmm. lost 20 minutes that yeah. I wasted time. I'm trying now to kind of combine those two items. Like, how do I, if I'm going to do my endless scrolling, how do I do it in a, in the space where it's acceptable or okay? Mm -hmm. Great example is when I blow dry my hair in the mornings. Okay, is when I watch my Instagram stories. Oh because I can't do anything else. I'm just like blow drying hair. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, I'm doing this and I just turn them on and put them right there. I'm just like, doo, doo, doo. and then it's like, well, I'm doing that, but I'm already doing something else. There's right. a little bit of a multitask and then I cannot be all in that and I'm not wasting time doing this. So right. for me, that's really helpful, but I probably still do more than I should. <laughs> it's, it's like you said, you get, you get sucked in. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. Yeah. Um, Tell me, kid, kid life. Think back. Mm. This is this is unscripted world here. Uh, tell me a little bit about some of those stories of you on the mom side that really, you know, we're just coming out of Mother's Day, um, headed right into all about the girls, the event. Mm -hmm. Tell me some mom style stories that either scared the hell out of you as a mom, uh, <laughs> made you question being a mom. <laughs> Give me something. What are some of those big memories as, as your kids grew up that you'll never forget? Well, so as you mentioned, Chris had two kids from his previous marriage, so I it was an instant mom. Yeah. And so, um, and hadn't it was had kids fun. Yet, so had you not had kids it's yet, not like but you, you know, of course, yet. we dated for quite a while, so you know, you were used to them being around. Um, but it was definitely an adjustment. You know, just just the any mom can speak to the constant worry you have about kids and it didn't matter that they weren't mine i loved them like my own and yeah. you just worry Especially about them like their own i don't know that there was like a them. yeah i don't know that there was a specific thing but just feeling like you were this young person and you know, suddenly responsible for these kids yeah so and we have another lifer mallman in Peyton, who's That's your right. youngest daughter, right. correct? Yep. Um, and you two, to me, seem like peas in a pot. Like you're <laughs> very are. similar people, like of all those kids. Um, I mean, Nikki's not far off either. You guys no. have some strong similarities, mm -hmm. but you and Peyton are just mirrored images almost. Do you see that as well? Oh, totally. We th like laugh all the time together because we finish each other's sentences yeah. or, or we'll say the same thing at the same time. I, a lot, really a lot. Okay. And is it just, what is that? What, how do you, is it just that she's I yours? I think it's just that connection. That, yeah. You know, you're just you, sort of so connected. You two. Yeah, it is. And I don't know if it's just because she's the youngest. So she was and so when Trevor went off to school, then it was just her, of course, for yeah. a little while. So I don't and know maybe if that's that it. whole like growing thing, as we talked about earlier, where you're growing and changing as a person. Yeah. Um, I just talked to uh, our buddy Tom Seeley today at Thomas Kia, and he was talking about he just had so he had a baby. Right. It's now 20 months old, and then had two twin girls. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, I was, and you know, he said similarly, um, just being older this time because similarly he had some kids mm -hmm. and then he had a gap and then he had a couple new kids mm -hmm. and that gap has made allowed him to mature a little bit I think mm -hmm. he said and similarly like he has better means to parent better whether it be mm -hmm. because he can afford better things yeah. or because he has a better sense like you're more of an adult now than mm -hmm. you are when you're 30 than you were when you were 20 or right. whatever that is and right. so maybe it's like I You're believe the, Chris would say yeah. that same thing. Yeah. About, about the maturity for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I've learned about myself. Yeah. As I learn through my 30s, as I, <laughs> as I grow and change as an adult in my 30s, <laughs> I've calmed down a little bit over the years. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good calmer, for, gentler, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> if there was ever going to be something. If there is a thing. <laughs> it's, it's me now. I'm Zen Jen. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? Nope. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't Lord. cut that out. Okay, Let we finally stopped that. giggling. Let me sit in that. That's my Zen fault. Jen. I said it. We're going to leave it. <laughs> All right. So we're here for quick response questions. Okay. I know you've heard some of the episodes, so you know this. However, if you haven't listened to one of the newest, I have a little bit different. I'm ashamed so to say I have not. That's okay. Catch up on them this weekend. Okay. It's not a big deal. All right. Um, so as you know... <laughs> That's a buzzer. We have one. Deanna Grimes. Woo woo. Thank you. Uh, and I will buzz you if you don't answer these questions fast. Oh, there's enough. a correct. Oh, I have fast. a time limit. I see. <laughs> She's like, oh, there's a right answer. Girl, <laughs> guess again because I got my own answer and it's not yours. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she got so much sass in that. Comment. Oh my god. So fast. She's like, oh, there's a right. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So speed is speed is the key. Got it. So you'll have quite a few seconds. I'm not too harsh, but you'll have quite a few seconds. Maybe I'll be a little harsh. I'm going to block you. Jump. Yeah. Uh, Kelly, the police officer that we had on from yeah. him, and she, like, literally, like, in the middle of it, she's like, um, I, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> right. like, you can't steal the throw buzzer. In. <laughs> <laughs> Automatic buzz penalty okay. if you steal the buzzer. All right, I'm ready. Let's go. Would you rather go into the past and meet your ancestors or go into the future and meet your great-grandchildren? Oh, I'd rather go into the past. Great, great grandchildren. Past. Okay. Yeah, yeah. ancestors is the way to go. Yeah. You think? I mean, I've never been, like I said, I was adopted. I've never been curious about meeting my birth parents. I almost asked that earlier, but I didn't want to touch but, it. It was sensitive. That's good to know. I'm curious. Like, if I could see them from afar, that would be great. Yeah, and like maybe not just those folks, but like everyone before them yes. as well. See yes. kind of where you came from a little bit. Yeah, for Fantastic. sure. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, would you rather meet George Washington or the current president and why? I thought you were going to say George Clooney. Oh, I was going to say, listen, uh, duh. Uh, that's why I don't ask that question. George, okay, I missed it. Now that I was only thinking about George Clooney. <laughs> George Washington or why? She can't even... You didn't even listen to the question. I didn't. I thought George Clooney. Mm. And then I went off over here. George Washington or the current president and why? Oh, hmm. I think George Washington. Yeah. And okay. why? Because I think it would be really cool to get his perspective on, you know, at that time, if, if I'm not mistaken, segregation was starting. I'm not a very good history person. Um, so the worst right here. So <laughs> no. To me for advice. No. <laughs> anyway, I think it would be cool to get his perspective as the country was kind of just starting to form and we know there were some big issues back then but also there was a lot of early stuff that maybe we could have learned from too yeah but do you um, think you could learn from or could you teach george washington i think both i think, I, think right. I could do both i think probably more teach but <laughs> both i'll take okay i'll take uh, it <laughs> <laughs> what woman would you want to have on your side in a battle royale Battle to the death, mm. if you will. Well, I, you know, I grew up playing tennis, and I've still dabbled a little if my 54-year-old hip would support <laughs> me. Crap back However, together. I think I'd like to have Serena Williams on my Ooh. own. Ooh! <gasps> one of my favorite answers. Right. That's a damn good one. Yeah. She's a badass. She, yeah. She'll hurt somebody for some Right? Reason. I wouldn't yeah. mess with her. Yeah. That's fantastic. Fantastic option. Well, thank you. No buzzer for me. <laughs> <laughs> That time. Uh, that time. Surprised you didn't go off on a tangent about thinking about her, too. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think I, I can guess what you're going to guess. Okay. Uh, I can guess your answer. Okay. Would you rather everyone in the world be s smarter or nicer than current? Nicer, for I sure. I going to say that. You're a nice person. Well, thank you. Uh, but I think I would guess nicer, too. And I think the reason is, is that I think being nicer helps people's mental health so much more that that helps so many other things thus be making them smarter. I just think that nice can overcome maybe not so much intelligence. Like if you're a nice person, mm -hmm. you can get pretty far. I completely agree. Yeah. And you can change the, all of the people around you. Mm -hmm. If you're smarter, maybe you could do that too. But I, I feel like kindness just has just, a heavier impact. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. I agree. Uh, what would be the title of your biography? Oh, jeez. Give me that thing. 
and she steals the damn um, buzzer. What would my... Um, it would have something to do with being adopted, I think. Because I felt the same. Even though I adore my parents, I feel super lucky to have been adopted in their family. It is a thing that, like tugs at me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. So, not in a negative way, but just, I don't know. What would it be? Hmm. Ancestors. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was just thinking no. of the ancestors of yeah. great, great grandchildren. Yeah. Um, Something about a maple leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you can have it back now. <laughs> maple leaf. No, maple leaf. Maple leaf. Oh. Canada. Made from a maple leaf. <laughs> right. <laughs> Again, don't cut it because it's so terrible. Right. I'm the cheesiest, corniest person I don't know. That would take me some time. Because that's an important I'm thing. I'm sorry, we're all awful. <laughs> maple leaf. I think you said make believe, and I was like, "Are we pretending?" Okay, we were talking about Canada. Tell me more we about were guys. maple leaf. <laughs> God, From one hockey. Stick I am to gonna the hate next. listening to that laugh on the. <laughs> I'm gonna hate listening to my laugh on this thing. You'll have mine as a contradictory, worse option, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, pull it back together. Uh, <laughs> um. What? <laughs> what? We haven't even finished two drinks. <laughs> this one still has some. That one I definitely know, has I a still half. Have most of one <laughs> and a quarter of another. Oh, but my I'm officially God. double fisting. I'm, okay. Listen, guys, they're seltzer waters. It's not like we're taking shots of tequila. We've talked about it, but. We, yes, we like have. I said, next time. Um, <laughs> what is your favorite month of the year and why? I am. Oh, uh, well. I don't think it's, I, I'm definitely a fall person. Fall is my favorite season. Mm -hmm. I think as I've grown older, Thanksgiving is my definite favorite holiday. So like the October, November world yeah, is where you're at. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's fun. Yeah. And Christmas Just birthday's in October, right? Christmas birthday's in October. Okay. That's a good time um, of the year. It is. For you. Yeah. All okay. our kids' birthdays are December, January, February, March, ironically, all four months right in a row. Ooh, wow. Yeah. And you're like, listen. So that's fun, too. I'm but enjoy November. I, I as I, like I said, as I've aged, th being thankful for what you have and is, is kind of resonates with me a little bit more. So That's cute. Yeah. I like it. Thanks. Uh, what superpower would you most want if you could choose only one? Mm. Some of common choice. Some people have had a hard time understanding what those are. You could think flight. Super vision, invisible, invisible superpowers, super strength. You can have spider web hands if you want, I suppose. Hmm. <laughs> Not sure what I'd use that for, but hmm. uh, I'm not going down that road. Yeah, I just, again, I know it sounds cliche, but I just think the world needs to be a kinder place. And so, I went niceness police. <laughs> <laughs> niceness police. I, I fit right in. Angsty. <laughs> like, you've got to have the cops to do that. Versus... Stop. You're being mean. <laughs> <laughs> we, have a, we have a cape. It's right here. <laughs> Put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> God, I can't. <laughs> Super nice girl. <laughs> NSG. I mean, SNG. I'm like, I just got the letter. <laughs> Cut her off. Yeah. <laughs> it's official. No, but really, I just feel like... Like some sort of way to kind of add kindness. Yeah. Yeah. It's kindness, girl. Yeah. Got it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Bet you no one's ever said that. <laughs> nope, they have not. Not even once. Uh, <laughs> would you rather make a phone call or send a text? Oh, well, depending on who it is, but mostly send text. Yeah. Okay. Because it's quicker. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just a fan of the darn old fashioned phone call. Are you? I know that's because you're sound sales. like I'm an old fuddy duddy, but I'm just like, listen, if I can get, well, yeah. And on that kind of just same spectrum of like kindness and stuff, if I send an email that says, hey, you want to get together for coffee? That could say, hey, do you want to get together for coffee? Or it could say, hey, you want to get together for coffee? But if I say it, it can't sound that way if I don't That's say it that true. way. So yes. for me, just there's so much to be read in a text or an email. 
That's and true. Phone. So for me, it's mostly phone. I That's mean, true. It's technically I do text more, but I prefer phone calls. Yes. Mostly the text because it's quicker. Yeah. Um, I actually really don't like text for like the younger generation. I, they don't have to talk to each other anymore. You need to force them to talk yeah. to each other. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but in yeah. terms of time, text for sure. Would you rather be a kid your whole life or an adult your whole life? Oh. I'm looking at that buzzer. I know. Oh, I didn't see. Damn. I no. thought you still had it. I didn't notice. You put it back. I didn't notice you put it back, or else. I think I'd rather. I, no, I'd rather be an adult. Really? Yes, because I think kids have it hard now. Nowadays, I don't think I could go back. If I could go back to my. Childhood, yes, then I would rather be a kid. No, today's kids, I don't want to be any part of that. Nope. That's terrible. It's way too hard. It's way too on hard on kids, like not to get all, you know, on my soapbox. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I. I can't imagine going to school and being scared. And being scared of being bullied and all the people online. All you have the to things. Be perfect and you have to look perfect. And right. Have, we had some of that. I mean, I was, I was the fat kid named Jenny Craig. We've all heard that boring story. But, like, that sucked. But, number one, it ended immediately the day I graduated, right? Like, so much of this stuff can yeah, carry Yeah, nobody over. made a post about it. And then and all the yeah, 10 people like, behind it made fun of it and yeah, all that stuff. And it's, it's just, such no a way. small scale when it's in person because it's this person that says something to me and the four people around him that hear it. But now it's those four people and then they post it to their audience of hundreds of thousands or right. whatever it is. Right. And now you've got this, right. you know, snowball. So adult. So let's talk. So that's it. You just okay. did it. How do you feel? I feel good. Good. The See? tequila ranch water's helping. These ranch don't, waters don't are just, uh, <laughs> these ranch waters are fantastic. You can talk about it. It's not like we're getting hammered. We're just having no, a No, that's true. Um, so let's talk a little bit. Uh, one of, uh, another reason, as we come, as I mentioned, I really wanted to have you on for this episode because we just came out of Mother's Day and we're coming into June, which is all about the girls. the girls. So the event is right around the corner. Literally, we're in a what do you want to call this? A time machine. So we're recording two weeks to the day of all about the girls. Yes. So wow. two weeks from today is all about the girls. That's exciting. I'm nervous. But, Are you? I mean, you don't really yeah. get nervous. You're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I hide and mask it well behind mm. ranch water and great makeup. I don't know. It works. Faking, it was working for you. It. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm. So we've got great speakers this year. So great. for people, I would love yours. You've been obviously to every single one. Yes. You were our opening remarks team on your ten of good the news. company. So that would have been. 19. Yes. Tell me. Three years ago. I know. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. Feels like it was yesterday. I'm going to get you back on the stage like today. Mm -hmm. um, for those that have never been, one of the biggest struggles I have, or I think we have with this event, is getting people to understand what it is. And I keep telling people, like, listen, it's not the boring, stuffy thing that you have to go and, like, wear a suit and tie and it has to button up all the way. Like, come as you are, come as you want, whatever. I mm -hmm. go bougie, as we know. But, like, you can come however you want. You can have as much fun. You don't have to. It's not stuffy. Give your pitch. If you were to tell elevator the pitch. folks that are listening what All About the Girls is about the event, tell, tell them what your view it's a compilation of great speakers every year there's great speakers every year oh i gosh. cry i laugh same i get inspired um and it's it's just really a cool event like and everyone seems to really have fun when they come together mm -hmm. it seems like um you know everyone's excited to hear the speakers mm -hmm. um Peyton, our daughter, has really gotten into it. She's, yeah. she's, she's coming back up from Indianapolis to yes. be there. Um, but got, I know just... we've got someone coming from Indy and Fishers. Okay. Um, someone I just... Didn't we have someone at the meetup the other night that mentioned someone coming in from far away too, right? I don't remember. But we've got some people, some folks traveling quite, quite a ways mm -hmm. to get here. So mm -hmm. that'll be really fun. Yeah, so I think that just tells you how um, what an impact it's starting to have on a regional level. But it's just mostly really cool to hear people's stories. Um, I never regret being there, and it's just like I said, it's it's inspiring. It really is. Thanks. I completely agree. Um, 
And that's what we always try to get people to understand is we, return customers, if you will, are not a problem. Right. Once you go to the event, you right. love it. Right. But people are like, well, I don't, it's, if it's like an expo or if it's a conference style, think about that, but like, Way more ladies, way more fun. Yeah, way not less conference stuffy. style at all. It's very laid back. It's very, um, they don't speak for like a long time. It's like yeah. five minutes per person. Mm -hmm. And it's that brief um, inspirational portion of their story. Like, what is that? And it could be sometimes it's the hard stuff, sometimes it's the not start hard stuff. Whatever it is through that time frame, it's the, them telling their story kind of wrapped around that theme, like this year's True Grit. Right. So, what makes you gritty? Who, why are you gritty? Why are you the way you are? Who taught you that? Who was like that in your life? You know, mm -hmm. those sorts of, however they how want does to that, it. How does True Grit connect with you? Yes. Or whatever the theme is. Exactly. And I can say you will not regret going. You will not regret going. No one. No. I agree. Mm -mm. That's a great point. I don't I think anyone it. goes and says, oh, I would uh, rather stay home. Yeah. Not, not for sure. So if you haven't heard, go check it out. You can find all about the girls, the event, which is the reason we're here at this podcast. Yes. Um, you can find it, go to Eventbrite and search all about the girls part seven. Same with Facebook. You can find it on my Facebook page, Chris's great news life Facebook page. Everybody's got it. Um, tickets are 50 bucks and that mm -hmm. includes your uh, open bar and food entry to the event. We'll mm -hmm. have some raffles. We've got all kinds of great stuff happening this year. So get a grab bag um, to go, right? Yeah, you get to oh, yeah. listen. <laughs> I don't like to brag. I tend to be a humble but person. I'm gonna. But <laughs> I'm gonna. Our swag bags are legit. Like selfie sticks, sunglasses, and a bunch of other stuff. That we're not gonna tell you. Not telling you because you have to get there and you have to get the good stuff. Yeah. Um, so hope to see everybody at All About the Girls, the events. Listen to the podcast. Tune in with us. Share. Tell your friends about us. Um, thank you, you, Natalie. You will not be disappointed. Well, thank you for thank being you. here. Thank you. Thank you for having you. me. You're one of my favorite women in the world. <laughs> you keep me sane. Probably one thing we didn't talk about that we should have was our work-life balance with each other. Like, we mm -hmm. toss Chris back and forth. Like, yes, I can't do. handle him anymore. He's yours. You take him. And then I'm like, I don't want him. Take him back. Uh -uh. And then we do this. Mm -hmm. And I call you and go, I'm, I'm going to punch do? him today. And you go, it's okay. Me too. Or, <laughs> hey, why? Let me tell you how it's going to be okay. Yeah. And it's a really cool balance. So I appreciate you doing that for me. You doing that for the company. You're very much our work mom kind of hmm. you take care of all of us number one you make sure we get paid it's pretty awesome uh but Close also <laughs> noted uh you're just that person that makes us all feel like it's all going to be good hmm. and that's a that's nice. strong strong suit i appreciate hmm. it well thanks for having me of course all right guys get your all about the girls tickets we will see you next month thanks so much and have an awesome day